why you should stop dating these seven types of men. Number one, we have microwave men. The same way when you want food made quickly, you put it in the microwave because the microwave is the quickest and the most painless way to cook food is the same thing that these guys are doing when it comes to the relationships. So let's say you meet a guy on Hinge. You shouldn't be on Hinge, but let's say you're on Hinge and you realize after a while of texting him, we'll get to texting in a bit, that he doesn't seem to want to do too much planning to go out on a date. Instead, he just continuously hits you up whenever he's like free in the moment. So he's like, yo, I'm free right now. You want to hang out right now? Or I'm free in an hour. You want to do something in an hour? And obviously, since you guys are doing something in an hour and it's last minute and it's not really planned, what are you guys going to do? Sit in the car. He has access to Squirtle. Eat McDonald's. Squirtle. Come to his house. Squirtle. He goes to yours. Squirtle. Very low quality hangouts. And even when you guys are hanging out, you guys aren't really talking about anything. It's just a bunch of small talk. Maybe watch show or whatever. Squirtle. All he wants to do is hit you up right in the moment. And if he's not going to be able to hit you up right in the moment and talk to you right in the moment and be able to get access to you right in the moment and then get access to Squirtle right in the moment, he's not willing to sit down and be like, okay, I got to plan my schedule out. Okay, we got to plan these days. What days are you free? I'm not free that day. Okay, I got to see you next week. We got to do this. We got to. He's not interested in doing that if he's a microwave man. That requires consistency. That requires building. That requires all that stuff, all that effort that he is not interested in participating in and i don't want that for you which is why you want to avoid microwave men as much as you possibly can and if you're going to avoid microwave men then you're probably going to have to avoid dating apps if you think about the logic when you break it down if microwave men are always looking for the most quick easy and painless solution to Squirtle, it's actually even easier to get access to Squirtle from a dating app than it is at a bar. Because when you think about it, if I go out to the bar or the club, I got to dress nice. I got to be hygienic. I got to look good, smell good. I got to have some rhythm. Nobody's going to want to come around me if I got no rhythm. I look like I can't dance. You know, I can't move. When I meet girls and speak to girls in person at the club or the bar, I'm going to have to be charismatic. I'm going to have to be interesting. I'm going to have to be able to keep up good chat have good conversation, all of those things. And all of those things are going to make it harder if I'm a man and I'm trying to get access to Squirtle those are going to be challenges that I must overcome in order to get access to Squirtle. Not that it's impossible, but like I said, I'm going to have to be funny, interesting, charismatic. I'm going to have to work on my chat. These are all skills I'm going to have to develop over the course of time in order to more efficiently get more and more access to more and more Squirtle as a man. Rather, they can stay home. They don't got to get dressed. They don't even got to put on deodorant and not have to worry about uh, even going out and really having a real conversation with anyone. They can just swipe and swipe and swipe and swipe and swipe and swipe. And literally, as they're playing the game, they can be swiping, right? While they're chilling or while they're, you know, uh, going into battle, whatever they do. I don't even play video games. I forget what they do now, right? But as they're playing the video game, they can be chilling and swiping as the game is going on. I say that because I want you to understand truly how quick, easy and painless it is for them to get on these dating apps, which is why you want to be avoiding the microwave men. Because when you think about it, if all the men you're meeting are men from dating apps and you're meeting a lot of microwave men, now you probably see why you constantly find yourself in situations where all the men that you meet and come across only seem to want to jump right into, you know, pineapples, jump right into your squirtle. And that's the only thing they can think about or do. And that's the only thing they think is worthy of their time. If you're not giving them that, then they see no reason to be around you or with you. And you wonder why you keep feeling like you come across the same guys. And you wonder why you feel like all men are trash. And you wonder why you feel like all guys are trying to play you or deceive you in order to get access to this. And they're not patient. They don't want to build relationships. They don't even want to take girls seriously. Some of you, some of you even are of the belief that guys don't even want to talk to girls like truly like they're not interested in talking to girls in real life. A lot of you, when you spend the, the perspective or majority of your time on these dating apps, right? You're meeting a lot of microwave men. What do you think your understanding of men is going to be? You're going to feel like majority of men are microwave men looking for the quick, easy and painless solution to all versions of relationships. Okay. Okay? Because these men aren't interested in being consistent with you. They're not interested um, in doing anything that doesn't involve getting access to more Squirtle. 
And they're easily going to become frustrated if you're not giving them access to what they want in the most painless and easy way possible. Number two, we have Textaholic. I don't want to get mad, guys, because you guys know how I get about texting. And I know that a lot of you here are Textaholics. It might feel good to be with the Textaholic men. I guarantee you, though, it will backfire on you. These Textaholic men are texting you back all day, every day, and they're trying to get to know you over text. Obviously, you can't just text, hey, what's up 24 seven. So they're trying to actually build a conversation with you over text. They're trying to get to know you over text. They're trying to understand you over over text and i know for most of you when i say he's trying to understand you get to know you over text you're like oh my god that's amazing he's trying to get to know me over text what an amazing awesome guy where can i meet those guys do i find them on hinge do i find them in the trash can where can i meet the guys that want to get to know me over text i'm going to explain to you why that's actually not a good thing i'll give you guys an example let's say he dms you all memes all the time i know you guys love sending memes for those of you guys who are snapchat people let's say he's snapchatting you all the time every day you've got a 50 day streak going on with him on snapchat for those of you who are younger and that use snapchat right he's just talking to you about random things he's also texting you he's asking you deep questions questions that he would be asking you if he was on a date with you let's just say like that and then by the time you guys go on your real first date the conversation is not as stimulating not as interesting the way he smiles is a little bit crooked and it's just weird and off-putting he's a little bit awkward he feels awkward because he feels like it's more awkward than when you guys were texting. You feel awkward because you feel like it's more awkward than when you guys were texting. Everyone feels awkward. And so the awkwardness that you both feel makes it more awkward because nobody knows what to say. Everyone's laughing awkwardly. Nobody knows what to talk about. And both of you freeze. And it's a very uncomfortable date for both of you. And you both walk away saying, eh, I don't know if that's the person for me. When most of it, really, most of what you're feeling is the disappointment of them not being who you initially imagined them to be. And it's not their fault that they're not like that and vice versa. It's not your fault that you're not who he imagined you to be when he was a textaholic buddy with you. OK, and that's part, that's the main problem with these textaholic men is they'll get you so interested in them and make you feel like you're building such a deep relationship over text. But the reality is no human being on this planet Earth, no matter how much we trick ourselves, no matter how much we convince ourselves, are capable of actually being close to and understanding someone that we only text on a screen. You should avoid the men who are deep into their textaholicism and can't pull themselves out of it. Because those textaholic men get into that vicious cycle of texting, texting, texting. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God, you're the best. You're the best. You're the best. And they text you all this great stuff. Then when you meet them, it's not the same. And when they meet you, they don't feel the same. And so you're confused because they're confused because they feel awkward and you feel awkward and everyone feels awkward and disappointed and deflated. Because when he's constantly trying to get to know you over text, after a while of texting someone over and over and over again and not really putting in the effort of getting to know them and meeting them in person like in real life what's going to happen is the more and more you text that person you're going to start building an understanding of who they are and what their personality is and what their character is over text and you might think well what's wrong with that how, how is that a bad thing i don't even get why that's a bad thing the reason that's bad is because both of you will build an idea of the opposite per of the other person based on what you interpret their text to be, to mean, to feel, what you think their intention is, what you think they look like when they were texting, right? And all of this is happening in your imagination, meaning that it's not real, not real for you and it's not real for him. This is happening in your imagination. All you're seeing is text on a screen. And what's happening is both of you are interpreting and receiving that text on a screen based on your own individual perspective in life. Okay. I know this sounds super philosophical and deep. You're like, bro, it's just text on a screen. It doesn't really, it's not that deep. You guys know me. It's always that deep. What I'm trying to say is when you're interpreting that text on a screen, all of that information about who they are and what they're like is actually not coming from who they are and how what they're like or your observation. It's coming from your imagination because the more time and the more investment you spend into someone or feel like you're investing into someone, the more you feel like you should be understanding them and you, the more you start to build pieces of their personality and character. And because you have nothing to actually observe, 
you take the text and you interpret them to build a personality or a character. This happens to you and this happens to him as well. You might think, well, that's not that much of a bad thing. It's not that much of a bad thing. What ends up happening is by the time you do meet each other, you end up having a big misunderstanding of who the other person is. And a lot of times when you're building a person's personality and character with your imagination, you're going to build an ideal perfect person, someone without flaws, who does everything you do like and nothing you don't like. This is on both sides. So when you're with a textaholic man, a lot of these textaholic men don't understand that concept. So they do both of you a disservice because you don't get a chance to meet him as he is and have an understanding of who he is as he is. He also doesn't get an understanding to meet you as you are, get an understanding of who you really are. Then when you meet each other, both of you are kind of off put by the fact that eh, we had such a good text game but now that I'm with you it's a little bit awkward or we both talked a big game you know we're talking about oh I'm about to do this to you I'm about to do that to you and now that we're with each other I don't know I'm not that super attracted to you and then both of you end up realizing right or becoming disappointed meeting the other person in person or getting to know the real person because you realize they're not like the way you were imagining them to be but the reality of it is those people or the person you're meeting or the person you're dating that you've been texting that you're a textaholic a buddy with it's not you're not disappointed in them because they're actually a bad person or they're actually a loser or they're actually not interesting or anything like that you're disappointed because they don't fit the mold of the character and the personality that you originally thought that they had that's the problem so you'll always end up being disappointed if they don't fit what your idea was of them initially and vice versa they will always be disappointed in you no matter how amazing you are no matter how awesome you are no matter how much you do because they had an understanding and, I, and an idea of who you were at the beginning before they actually met you then when he meets you everything feels deflating the textaholic men find it difficult to talk to girls in person which is why they become the best texter it's like a crutch they realize that if they become a better texter right they can just hop on the dating apps and sound and look interesting on these dating apps and not have to actually have anyone realize that they're boring or uninteresting number three is victim men they tend to go into detail about how all the issues in their past relationships were their ex's fault or issues and they never contributed to the relationship ending and all they did in their past relationships was be very sweet and caring and understanding and forgiving and they have such a big heart and they're just such a good person that they can't believe that their ex-girlfriend would take advantage of them the way that they did. This is why it's so important for you to literally stay far away from these men, okay? Because danger is lurking right around the corner. I'll give you guys an example that I'm gonna tell you guys why this is so important to stay away from, okay? So let's say you ask a guy why him and his ex broke up. And he tells you how toxic and horrible she is. He goes on this whole diatribe. Diatribe just means story. Let me know if I use too many big words and you guys can't follow along. Not that you're not smart. I just know sometimes I use big words that are a bit too much. And let's say he goes on this big diatribe about how his ex did this, ex did that. She's such a bad person. He didn't do anything to deserve any of that. And then he tells you, he, you just continuously hear him talk about how this person did this to him in this relationship and then this other relationship this person did this to him and this ended because that person did that to them and all of these people are back. and you start to think huh it sounds like you're having the worst luck it sounds like everyone that meets you just wants to do the absolute dirtiest of dirt to you right whenever and this is a this is a pro tip for life okay because we talk about life and relationships whether a girl or a guy if you meet someone and all of the stories they tell you about their past friendships or relationships make their life seem like they're uh, such a sympathetic figure where everywhere they go, people are just literally waiting to do them the absolute dirtiest of dirt and do them wrong. And all they do is get done wrong. You should be very weary of those people and being around those people. That's just a pro tip. But especially in the men you are trying to date. Because the moment you meet a man 
who is only going to be able to tell you how every relationship that ended or didn't work out is his ex's fault or this girl's fault or that girl's fault and she did this and she said that and this and that you'll immediately realize that you have met a man who cannot take accountability for his own actions because at the end of the day no matter what relationship you were in no matter how long it lasted no matter how short it was no matter why it ended there were things you contributed to that relationship ending I don't care if the person cheated on you. I'm not saying that it's your fault if you get cheated on, but what I want you to understand is there are also things that you do to the person that are not so good. None of us are perfect. None of us are walking around angelic figures that don't make mistakes or say anything bad or upset people. Okay, let's just be so for real. So the idea that if you that you meet a man and you ask him about his past relationships and all he can tell you is how other people did him wrong and he's this sympathetic figure that never does anything wrong to anyone and wouldn't hurt a fly. Now you know you're with a man who cannot take accountability for his actions or words. That is very bad for you because you will not be able to solve problems and resolve conflict if that man cannot take accountability this okay this is where you guys i know the other ones were a little bit more straightforward these ones you i, I really want you to be paying attention here so don't be half asleep while i'm talking about this okay this is very important victim men are impossible listen to me impossible to be in a relationship with victim men are impossible to be in a relationship with because a relationship, I'm talking about a real one, not the one you see in a Disney, Prince, Disney princess movie or on Wattpad. A real relationship is mostly about resolving conflict. Truthfully, let's be so for real. If you cannot resolve conflict with your partner, you're going to be in a very bad place and that relationship won't last very long. And I say that to say, if you meet a man who cannot take accountability for what he's done or his actions or his words or what he's done wrong, then you're automatically going to be in a very bad place because how are you supposed to resolve conflict with someone who doesn't think that they've done anything wrong? Part of resolving conflict is acknowledging that, hey, I understand how you feel. I understand why you feel like that. I'm going to change or adjust my behavior so that that doesn't happen again and I don't make you continue to feel like that. So there has to be in that, there has to be an acknowledgement that I hurt you, I upset you, I did you wrong. I did something that was wrong. I apologize and I will actively try to change it so that it doesn't happen again. That takes accountability. So if you're meeting or dating a man who cannot take accountability and he seems like a victim man where everywhere he goes, he's the victim, especially in all his relationships, he's just 100% the victim and everything happens to him and he does nothing. That is someone who cannot take accountability in the rest of your relationship. So you're you're wasting a lot of your time. Because you're only going to be frustrated when you actually get into a relationship with him and you quickly realize that anytime you bring up something that upsets you or that you feel wrong or you feel disrespected, all he's going to do is tell you how you shouldn't feel that way because that wasn't his intention or you shouldn't feel that way because that's not what he did or you misinterpreted what he was doing or his actions or his whatever it may be. He's going to gaslight you and make you feel crazy for being upset, make you feel crazy for feeling disrespected, make you feel crazy for feeling wrong. And he's going to put all the onus of your uh, upsetness or your feelings of mistreatment on you and tell you how wrong you are for feeling that way. Number four, we have the silent man. You need to be I'm going to go on a rant about this one. I know I am. You need to be listen to me. You need to be staying far away from the silent man. Now, I know when I say the silent man, a lot of you are going to be confused. It's okay to be confused. This is probably one of the most important ones you need to be staying far away from. And it's so important because it's a lot harder to identify. Very difficult to identify but you'll end up in the worst situation when you're with the silent man. Silent men, this is what they'll do. When they have a problem with you, something that you do or you say when you disrespect them, whatever it may be that angers them or upsets them, they will stay silent. They will not address it. They will not speak up for themselves. 
They will not discuss it whatsoever. Here's the problem. They're so quiet about it and they hide it so well, you don't even know that they have a problem with something that you said or that you did. You want to know why that ends up really bad for you? Because after a while, we're all human beings. Nobody is capable of bottling things in forever. So even though each individual thing that upset him is small and inconsequential in the larger scheme of things, what ends up happening is each small minute thing just builds on top of itself because you're not releasing it. He's not releasing it because he doesn't let it go. He doesn't talk about it. He doesn't address it. He doesn't uh, tell you how he feels about it. He just bottles it inside. And so they're just stacking just like this. They're like feathers, just stacking on top of each other. One by one by one by one. And then what happens is one day you, he comes home from work and let's say you forgot to wash the dishes from last night when you guys cooked and he comes home and the dishes are still in the sink. And he sees the dishes in the sink and he freaks out and he goes, I can't believe this. Uh, you such a B word. You don't do nothing around this house. I, I don't know why I'm with you. I want to get a divorce. You're the worst partner ever. I can't believe I get through all this with you and I, just, I don't get nothing. He starts breaking down. He's just going crazy. He's punching walls, right? Going insane. And you're like, what happened? What, what, what's happening? And then he starts talking to you about this story. You, you know, back in 2005 when we were together and we went to and we went to my work party. And then at my work party, you're making a joke out of me in front of my friends, in front of my co-workers. You're talking about, oh, my man would never take a power drill and be able to fix anything. He doesn't know what he's doing with any power drills. He's such a wimp. And you're making a joke out of me in front of my co-workers. How you think that makes me feel? <laughs> How you think that makes me feel? And I'm sitting there like an idiot. He's talking about a situation that happened 12 years ago. Right? And you're sitting there like, what, 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 what are you talking about? Like, you're like, wait, what? A work party in 2000 and when, when did this, what, why didn't you, you're just confused. And then he's bringing up this situation from five years ago. He's bringing up this situation from three years ago. He's bringing up the smallest things that you didn't even realize were problems. And he's talking to you like all of these things were World War III. And like you just wronged him out of this world. And you're confused because you're like, why didn't you tell me that these were such big deals? If they're such big deals that you're talking about them 12, 5, 3 years later. The problem is these silent men will not address their problems, hoping that those problems will go away. The problem is those problems never go away. They just stack on top of each other. I don't care how evolved you are. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how masculine you are. If you do not address your issues with your partner for long enough, you will blow up. It's just that's how human beings are because we all need to feel resolved in our relationship. If someone wrongs us, or we feel upset by what someone says or does, we all need and desire to feel resolve, right? Which is why we apologize to each other as human beings. It's a very important part of relationships. If you do not feel resolved in your relationship, you're going to stack and stack and stack and stack your issues. And all of that is, all that is going to do is it's like pouring cement right? Just like little by little, you're pouring it drop by drop by drop. At first, it's not really that hard to move because it's just a very little bit of cement. You can step on it. You can crack it. You can move it around. You can get through it. But as those drops of cement just stack and they just pour and they just pour and they pour over time, when they don't get addressed, they harden. And when it hardens, that turns into resentment. 
And that resentment is very hard to get rid of. It's like hard cement. And as that resentment wall grows and grows and grows and grows and grows, eventually the wall becomes too big that they can no longer see you. And you guys are no longer connecting in your relationship. And eventually the wall gets so big that it topples over. And that that's why I say this silent man one is probably one of the most important ones on this list because it's one of the most painful ones to experience when it finally happens to you. And it's very hard to see happening unless you're really under, unless you've experienced it before, understand it or understand the concept. It's very hard to identify it happening because you'll feel like, how did I miss all of this happening? But that's the problem with the silent man is they're actually good at hiding their feelings or emotions. So even if you wanted to address it, you couldn't have because they were actively hiding how they felt from you. That's why it's so frustrating because let's say even if you had the intention of being like, I would have changed it if you would have told me or I would have apologized if you would have told me. You feel upset because you didn't even get the opportunity to address it or apologize or right the wrong because you didn't even realize that you had done them wrong. If you're with a man who, as you're in the course of you dating him, you realize that he's not bringing up any of his issues. He's not addressing anything. Every time you bring up something or you ask him how he's feeling about something, he's always suppressing his feelings, never talking about how he feels, never addressing anything. If you if you know, like, even there's sometimes that you know, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have acted like that. I should apologize. And for whatever reason, he's not addressing those things or whatever reason he's not speaking out for himself or trying to correct you or trying. You know what I mean? Like just in the state of being a normal human being, how things are going to bother you, you you notice that he never seems to have a problem with anything to the point where it becomes a little bit concerning. Yeah. Then you're with the silent man and you'll start to feel that happening as the relationship goes on. You'll be like, I don't know, man. It kind of makes me feel uneasy that we never seem to fight about anything, not because we're getting along so well, but because it just seems like you're avoiding bringing up anything that bothers you because trust, trust you, me. I don't care who you are. I don't care how amazing you get along after a while of being in a relationship, especially seeing, seeing someone every day or every other day, like you will, when you start when the relationship starts getting serious Things, some things that they do or say will bother you. If for whatever reason you find yourself in a relationship where the other person seems like nothing is bothering them, you guys never have a disagreement or argument, you should start to question that. Not because you should want a disagreement or argument, but because that's the normal state of relationships. You're not going to agree on everything. You're individuals. You're not going to do everything perfect. You're individuals. You're imperfect human beings. So when you're with a silent man, they're not going to speak up for themselves with anything. And they're going to make you feel like you guys are just coasting. There's no issues at all whatsoever. But what's actually happening is whatever they do have an issue with, they're going to suppress their feelings of it, not address it, and just allow it to build up. Sometimes it's a response from their childhood. Sometimes it's just something that they've learned over time, maybe from a past relationship. Either way, it is not something you want to be in a relationship with. It's not the type of man you want to be in a relationship with because it's only going to end up backfiring on you. And number five, we have laughs. L-A-F-S stands for love at first sight. You need to stay. This is another one I'm probably going to rant about. You need to stay far away from the love at first sight, man. I'm so serious. Like all jokes aside now. I know <laughs> this is why I'm going to rant because I know this is a deep topic. I know that we all want to believe that we are going to live out our own love story and it's going to look just like the notebook. It's going to look just like our favorite romantic movie. It's going to look just like our favorite Wattpad story. It's going to look just like our favorite smut book, all of that good stuff in all of your favorite Wattpad stories, smut books, Disney princess movies, all that good stuff, right? You see this reoccurring theme where the guy will just meet the girl and or see the girl and this wash of emotion will just bathe over him and he'll come to this realization seemingly from thin air it's actually coming from the writers but it seems like it's from thin air and in that same moment when he sees her 
he'll just immediately come to the realization that this is the woman he's got to spend the rest of his life with. This is the most amazing woman that's got to be the mother of his children. And this is the woman he knows that it's her and he it's had to be her and it's, it's her forever. When you watch that, remember, movies and TV and all that books, they're a dramatization of real life. They're not real life. Because if they were real life, they'd talk to you about how that person ate cereal in the morning and took a shower in the afternoon and all the boring stuff that you don't care about. They're a dramatization of real life. And so I say that to say, when you're watching that and listening to that and you're thinking, oh my God, I want my life to be like that. And then this man comes along and he tells you how, oh my God, when I saw you at that party, I just knew that it was you. I knew that we were going to be in love and I knew I wanted to make you the mother of my children. Yes, that sounds great in a smut book. It sounds great um, in a Wattpad story. It sounds great there. In a real life, that's not how things work. I don't want to burst your bubble, but if he sees you at a party, at an event, at a anywhere on the street, and he comes to the realization that he wants to marry you or he wants to make you his girlfriend simply by just seeing you somewhere for the first time, I can 100% promise you what he actually saw was not your amazing character, was not your riveting, interesting personality, was not your uh, bubbly, fun, outgoing character traits. It was your big fat ass. It was your voluptuous yiddies. It was your amazing supermodel smile. It was your beautiful eyes, your luscious hair going down to your beautiful bottom, your dump truck. Let's be so for real. I don't want to burst your bubble. I don't want to make you feel like you can't have good things or have your Disney princess movie. You're a princess still. But I want you to understand when these men come to you and he's trying to convince you how it was love at first sight. When he saw you, he knew that it was you. It's really about your amazing dump truck. Let's just be so for real. Because I don't care how spiritual you are. I'm spiritual. I don't care how uh, much you know about aura and energy and all this good stuff. I don't care. There is no way he could simply see you and know that you are the type of woman he would want to make the mother of his children. There is no way he could simply see you and know that you're the type of woman he would want to spend the rest of his life with. There is no way of him knowing anything real about you aside from how you look. So if that man is convinced that this love at first sight is real and that this situation really happened to him with you and you know he fell in love with you as soon as he saw you that man is very very confused and has his wires crossed he has crossed lust with love he does not understand the difference between the two there's nothing wrong with lust but there is something wrong if you're confusing lust with love because you're going to tell people and be in relationships with people that you think you love and that think love that that think that you love them when you're really in lust. The problem is if someone thinks that you're in love with them and you're really in lust with them, there's going to be a very deep misunderstanding that happens eventually because you cannot operate a long-term serious relationships solely off of lust. It's just not going to work. Okay. There has to be real love there. But if the inspiration for the relationship is actually about lust, but he's convinced himself it's about love, he's going to be very confused why three months from now, for a lot of you, it's three months, maybe a year from now, maybe six months from now, he just seems to be not as interested in you anymore. Or for some of you, his interest goes from all the way up here as I'm like out of the screen. It's like all the way up here. And then three months down the road, his interest in you is through the floor. Excuse me. And you're confused because you're like, how did you go from wanting to be with me, spend the rest of your life with me to all of a sudden you find me so annoying and you don't even want to talk to me? How, how did how did that happen in what seems like only three months? These love at first sight guys always have their wires crossed of love and lust. They don't understand the difference between the two and they can't identify the difference between the two. And the reason it hurts you is because you're building a relationship with that man with the understanding that it's of love, not of lust. 
And then you're confused when three months down the line, you realize it was really about lust. Or maybe you never realized that and you're just confused why the relationship doesn't go where you thought it would go. I obviously just gave you guys an example of a guy at a party and he sees you at the party and then he comes up to you and he tells you how amazing you are, tells you how he wants to take you out on a date and all that good stuff. And then let's imagine even on the first date, he's... When he's when he meets you after he sees you for the first time, right? He's texting you before the date happens. He's texting you all this overly sweet stuff. You guys should be starting to think about the guys that I'm talking about when I'm saying this too. He's texting you all this overly sweet stuff and you're like, oh, that's really nice. But then you also have this feeling in the pit of your stomach that like, eh, like this is a bit much. You know that you're amazing. You know that you're awesome. You know that people would love to be around you and spend time with you. But you can also feel in your gut, in your intuition, maybe in your squirtle, eh, this is a bit much. This doesn't really, it seems like you're projecting qualities onto me that I don't really have or that I haven't even shown you. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would be like, let's imagine this. I just literally just came up with this analogy. It would be like me coming up to you in the street and I tell you, oh my God, I've never met you before and you've never met me. I come up to you in the street and I tell you, oh my God, you have the prettiest feet of all time. Oh my God, your toes, they're so suckable. Oh my God, look at that. You're, you have the prettiest feet I've ever seen in my life. I, I can't believe how pretty your feet are. And you look down at your feet and you're like, uh, dude, I'm wearing shoes. I, I'm literally wearing shoes. And I go on like this 30 minute rant about how amazing your feet are and how luscious they are and how anyone would be blessed to have the type of feet that you do. And you're like, I'm li you literally cannot see my feet. What are you talking about? Why? Like, it's like, okay, I, that's a great compliment, but you cannot see what my feet look like. You're literally making things up or you're imagining what my feet might look like, maybe based on what I look like, but you cannot see my feet. And that's the same way with the love at first sight, man. You'll start to feel like, yeah, you're complimenting me or like, yeah, you, you're talking about these qualities or you're you're talking about me in a way where like you wouldn't even really know any of this about me. Like, I'm glad you think I'm amazing. I'm glad you think I'm awesome. I'm glad you think you want me to have your babies, but like you don't really know anything about me and you'll feel that. But a lot of times because you want it so badly to be your Wattpad story or your smart book, whatever, you're going to convince yourself that uh, whatever, you know, he's giving me attention. He's really into me. I'll just ignore that as a red, that won't be a red flag for me. Maybe he's just really into me. And the thing about it is the thing that makes it so confusing is that they're not really always going to tell you, oh, it's all about your looks. You're so, you're so amazing. And just because of your looks, right? They're going to make you feel like they're actually knowing you for who you are. But then when you think to yourself, you'll be like, but you don't actually know me though. You're literally projecting qualities onto me that whether I have them or not is irrelevant because you wouldn't, you haven't even spent enough time with me for you to know that about me or determine that about me. And you'll start to question, what, what, what are you really here for? What are you really interested in? Are you actually interested in me or are you interested in the idea of me? And that's the problem with these love at first sight men. Like I said, they're up here and then after three months, they're in the dumps and you're sitting there wondering, what happened? You seemed like you were so interested in me at first, and then all of a sudden your interest fell off of a cliff and it's solely because he never really knew you in the first place. What he was interested in was your big booty and also the idea of you that he planted and grew in his mind. It's the same reason, similar reason why you don't want to be with the textaholic man, right? Those men are building their imagination of you in their mind and they're taking that imagination that they have of you projecting it onto you. And then when you're not like that and you're, or you're not perfect as they imagined you to be, they're frustrated and they feel like, ah, I'm not interested in you anymore. Ah, I don't like you anymore. Ah, three months is up. I want to move on. I want to do something else. Number six, we have unscheduled men. An unscheduled man is a man who will always hang out or chill with you whenever he is free and he always is free. His schedule is very flexible. And even at times he'll abandon his own responsibilities to hang out with you or spend time with you. Now, I know that the first thing you're probably thinking when I say this, what's wrong with that? That would be a dream. This man would 
drop everything to be with me this man would change his whole schedule and his whole everything around to be with me that would be awesome i would love to date a man that would change his whole schedule and drop everything just to hang out with me and hang out with me as much as possible i'm a codependent too so i would love a man who's as codependent as that i know that that's what you think let me tell you why you should avoid dating those type of men so let's start with an example OK, let's say you start hanging out with the guy and he's sleeping over or you're sleeping over at his place. You're sleeping over at his place. You guys are having a good time. After a couple of times of sleeping over, you start to notice that anytime you do sleep over or anytime you do guy, you guys do hang out. The next day, he'll call into work and he calls into work a lot, calls into work so much so that you're starting to feel like, you know, he's going to get in trouble at work because he's calling in sick so much and you even notice that he stops taking extra shifts or stops doing things simply to hang out with you now it sounds good at first and then after a while when you guys start going through problems in the relationship you guys have arguments what do you think the first thing he brings up is he brings up the fact that he's done so much and sacrificed so much for you that you should either be perfect or be perfect. And the fact that you're not perfect, the fact that you would even do anything to make this relationship not the absolute best is a slap in the face to him because he's done so much and sacrificed so much for you. The other thing that will happen is as you guys grow in the relationship and he all he wants to do is spend time for you, make time with you, with you abandon all his responsibilities for you, you're going to re quickly realize that you're not with a man. You're going to quickly realize you're with a boy that you have to take care of and motivate. This is the key. You will be a dried up squirtle if you feel like you have to motivate your man. I promise if you have not experienced this, hopefully you never have to. If you end up with a man that you feel like you have to motivate to do something with his own life, your squirtle will be so dry, it's dangerous. Because you're going to feel like his mom. You're going to feel like if you don't make it happen for him or motivate him to get off and do it, he won't do it. All he wants to do is spend all of his time with you. And I know for those of you who are codependent, you're going to feel like, oh, but I want him to spend all his time with me. Yep, it's fun until you transition into being a full-blown adult and needing a man not just a man for you but also a man that can lead your children right and when you realize that all he wants to do is spend his time with you and he doesn't want to do anything else except spend time with you you'll realize he has spend time with you all the time money and what I mean by that is you can't make too much money if all he does is spend all his time and energy on you. Can't be too much of a protector and a provider if all he's doing is spending all of his time and energy on you. So when I say unscheduled, I mean really a man that does not have discipline or anything going for himself. He's willing to abandon all of his responsibilities and things that are important to him just to hang out with you and spend time with you. Now, I'm not saying that he should never do that, but if he's always doing that, that's a problem. You need to stay away from those type of men because two things will happen. When the relationship goes bad, he'll begin blaming you for the sacrifice he's making, spending all of his time and energy on you. It also, this is like a 1B, it also puts him at ed on edge. It puts him on edge because any th anytime something small happens, he becomes agitated that this relationship might end or go, or go south, go sour, and he spent all his time invested on you. But what does that do? It makes him more frustrated and more of an angry, anxious person. And number two, like I said, it also does, he won't be making too much money or having too much going on if all he's doing is spending all of his time and energy on you and he'll drop everything for you. Not that you shouldn't be a priority to him, but he should still have other things that are important to him as a man, especially. And these unscheduled men are the men that sit at home, play video games till whenever. Everything is every, listen, uns, like I always say, I'm getting passionate about this because I hate this. 
Like I always say, how you do life is how you'll do relationships as well. So these men, they sit, they play video games till whenever because nothing is scheduled. Play video games till whenever. W work if I can or I feel like it. If I'm scheduled, I will. If I'm not, maybe not. If I don't have to keep a schedule, I won't. Do the absolute bare minimum. Just everything is whatever. Life is whatever. Life is unscheduled. Life has no structure. Sounds great at first because you'll spend all your time with them and you'll hang out with them 24 seven. But as you grow older, you'll realize that if your man doesn't have structure, if your man doesn't have discipline, if your man doesn't have a schedule, he'll be all out of whack, number one. And he also will not be able to manage a family. OK, and remember what I talked to you guys about the, at the beginning and what I always talk to you guys about, you're always looking for qualities in a man that can actually help you build a long term, serious, sustainable relationship. And if you plan on dating someone, I'm assuming you have the intention of eventually marrying them. If you have the intention of eventually marrying them, then you have the intention of having children with them. If you're going to have children with them, you need to be understanding of if he has the qualities that are required of a man and your husband and a father to your children that he can actually be a good one and not a waste of space where you got to pick him off off the floor and get him to go do something with his life. These unscheduled men, a lot of times, sometimes they change, sometimes they grow out of it, sometimes they don't. But you don't want to be sitting around waiting and hoping that an unscheduled man will become a disciplined, structured man. Because by the time you have children with him, it's too late. By the time you are married to him, it's too late. And when, trust me, like I said, you'll be a very, very sad woman if you're married to a man who sits on the couch all day and plays video games and works a minimum wage job. Your squirtle's going to be dry. I'm trying to tell you now. Don't put yourself in a position where you, you spend time with the guy who uh, will always spend time with you and is free 24-7 and will text you 24-7 and has nothing going for himself just because you want someone to be around. And then you find yourself in a, rela a real relationship with someone who always just wants to chill and be around. And he don't want to do anything but chill and be around. And number seven, an indecisive man. A man who cannot and does not want to have to make decisions for himself and for the both of you. <laughs> There's a lot of men like this out there, okay? And each and every one of them, you want to be staying far, 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 far away from. If you're here with me, I only discuss heterosexual straight relationships. So only because I only know that and I've only experienced that. So that's all I'm going to speak on. The reason I say that is because in a heterosexual straight relationship, the man represents the masculine energy. The woman represents the feminine energy. All Obviously, we all have a little bit of both. I'm just speaking generally. I say that to say your man in his masculine energy has to be able to lead you, not just lead you, but also lead your little ones as well. Not that you won't have opinions or thoughts or perspectives or advice or be smart and intelligent. You will. But in the hierarchy, your man is supposed to be the leader and you're supposed to be able to trust your man to lead you in the right direction okay there's a responsibility on the man that if he's going to lead he has to be a responsible leader like i say not that you won't make decisions or have opinions or be intelligent you will and you're going to contribute a lot to the relationship but he needs to be able to make decisions and be a leader like a leader would you can be an introvert and still be decisive and still make decisions and still be a leader to your wife and your family. Okay. I didn't know that's a shocker. If you are or find yourself in a relationship with a man who is indecisive, you will find it very difficult to exist in your feminine energy simply because you're constantly, your mind frame is going to be in a place where you feel like if you don't make the decision, if you don't think of the thing, if you don't do the thing, it will not get done. And this is why I say this. You'll, like we talked about with unscheduled, you'll find yourself in a place where you feel more like a mother figure than you do a lover or partner. I think that when a lot of people hear me say the man is the leader or the, or the head of the family or whatever, 
People get all riled up. Oh, no, but are you saying that men are better? Are you saying that men are more capable and more intelligent than us? How dare you say that he should be the leader? I should, I gotta lead too. I, I wanna be the, I wanna be the boss too. Does not mean that you are less capable than him. Actually, you're just as capable than him. I'm just referring to in the masculine energy in order for him to be and exist in his masculine energy, he has to be able to take lead, make decisions, make smart decisions, take advice from you, listen to you, take into account what your needs are, and try and make a decision that best serves the whole, the family. Do you understand? The same way we have leaders in politics, leaders in society, there's a reason that every dynamic and society has a hierarchy of decision making. If everyone had equal power in every corporation or company or every position in the world, there would be no way to determine or system to create and come to an actual decision on anything. If everyone has the same say and everyone is able to agree and disagree and there's no system and hierarchy then there's no way to actually make a decision. Do you understand what I'm saying? So think of your relationship like a business. If there's no CEO, how are you supposed to create rules and regulations that then sift down to the employees? Not that you're an employee. I'm just speaking on the concept. There has to be a hierarchy or structure in order for this thing to move in a forward direction. It has nothing to do with you not being smart or intelligent or capable or understanding or not having any skills. That's, that's not, it's not, not because a man is better, simply because there has to be a hierarchy in order for things to get done. So you need to be with the man that can make decisions because if he cannot make decisions, he's not able to fulfill his role properly. Imagine, I just gave you guys the example of a business or a corporation. Imagine if at Amazon, right? I know you guys know who Jeff Bezos, let's use Tesla actually, because I maybe, maybe Elon Musk is more popular than Jeff Bezos. At Tesla, if Elon Musk doesn't make a decision or actually have a vision of where he wants to move the company forward in, and everyone just gets to give their ideas and everyone has the same say, how are they possibly supposed to make a decision on what the next best course of action is? If everyone just gives their opinion randomly and there's no structure to say, okay, someone's going to ingest these opinions and ingest these concepts, ingest these ideas. They're going to look through all the different course of actions. They're going to congregate with the group of board members and things like that. They might go through a vote. The most important people at the top might have a vote on what the best course of action is. Obviously, each person might have a different level of power. Eventually, there will be a system in place where the people and the leaders, the leaders that are empowered to make the decisions, make a decision. They have to. It can't just be in debate forever. And I say that to say, if you're with an indecisive man, you'll very quickly find yourself frustrated because you're going to have to be the one making decisions. You're going to be the, have, have to be the one getting things done or else they won't get done. Protection is also that, hey, I know I can make decisions that benefit you and me. Not, that, not because you're not smart, but because I am capable of understanding your needs, being aware of your needs, and helping move us in a forward direction that is beneficial for both of us. And you start to feel unsafe after a while. If you want to be the man in your relationship, that's fine. I'll also probably say that you're going to feel a lot of stress being the man in your relationship. And if you're going to be the man in the relationship, then you're probably better off just being single. Because essentially, you're taking on the stress of being with the man, taking care of the man, and then not getting a chance to ever exist in your feminine because you're taking care of him. So you don't have any room to be feminine if you're taking care of your man or you're the boss. Now, obviously, just like with everything, there's a balance. So it's not like, oh my God, he's got to make all the decisions all the time and everything is by his way and you never make any decisions. There's a balance. I'm still speaking on the hierarchy though. The same way a CEO doesn't make every single decision. What I mean by that is he still takes input from other people and he even makes decisions that other people suggest him to make and he okays it. 
because he understands that he's not always going to be the smartest person in the room. And so even if he's the one stamping the decision, the decision might have came from someone who's two steps lower than him or one step lower than him or his right hand man, because one person is never capable of making all the right decisions. They need someone else who is just as smart and just as intelligent to make decisions as well. Do you understand that? So maybe when I say leader, don't think of it as, oh my God, he, he runs you. Think of it as you guys work together to make decisions. You fold up the package, you write the letters and all that stuff, and he stamps it. And that's how it gets sent to the right place. Without his stamp, it doesn't get sent to the right place, but that doesn't mean you didn't have a hand in everything that's inside that letter. I literally just made that off the top of my head. I don't want it. I don't want you to get so frustrated with the idea that a man should make decisions that you you go out because this is the problem. This is the problem. You guys want a man who will chase after you. You guys want a man who will be consistent with you. You guys want a man who will court you, take you out on dates, be nice to you, be courteous to you like the quote unquote traditional man would do, which is nothing wrong with that. You want him to pay for dates. Nothing wrong with that. Be respectful. Nothing wrong with that open doors, be kind to you. But then you get, if you get frustrated when I start talking about, oh, he should make decisions, he should be decisive, he should be a leader. Well, do you want the man that will take care of you, protect and provide? Or do you want the man who's going to be in his feminine, sit back and expect you to chase him? Because if you, if you're okay with being the co-lead, if you're okay with, okay, yeah, we'll both make decisions. We're both at the top. I'll, I'll be masculine sometimes. He'll be masculine sometimes, right? If you're okay with that, then you also have to be okay with, okay, then you, you're going to chase your man sometimes. You're going to pay for the date sometimes. You're going to be the one courting your man sometimes. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. I don't think that's why most of you guys are here though. Because you can have a man that will chase after you, that will be motivated to uh, 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 do nice things for you, to treat you like a woman, make you feel like a woman, help you exist in your feminine energy. But yeah, he's, he's going to have to exist in his masculine energy too then. He's going to have to actually protect and provide. I hate to say it because I know for some of you, it's, you know, it rubs you the wrong way. I just know what you, most of you guys want out of a relationship and want out of a man. So I try to point you in the right direction so that you can see and attract those men and not the men that I was discussing here.